Hey, it's Talk Gnosis. We're not one of those fancy podcasts or YouTube shows that does introductions about what the show is about or introduces our guests. So we're just going to hop right into it. Chances are you're here because you're interested in the esoteric or Gnosticism or philosophy or art. But we have a guest I'm really excited to have on the show. I need a better intro than that because it sounds phony, Travis, but it's true. You know, I don't know you. I don't own any of your work. That's why people have to sign up for our Patreon so I can both pay my power bill and also buy some of your work. But I've admired it from a Bar for, for a very, very long time, basically, uh, yeah, the, for, for a number of years now. Uh, I really think it's moving. I really think it's powerful. You also work in a, in a medium that is, uh, that's one of my favorites. So uh, I lived with, uh, with a bunch of art school uh, students uh, when I was uh, in college. Uh, some of them were uh, working in the same medium, the medium of which we will discuss in a moment. So really excited to have you on the show. Travis, thanks so much for coming on. Thanks. Thanks for the invitation. So we'll just get right into it here. I, I guess first, um, you know, I, I'm talking about the medium that you work in. I, I want to actually get you to talk about that because it may not be familiar to, to people who don't know that much about art. So I'm wondering if you could just talk about the actual physical, physicality of your work, what it is that, 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 that you do in the main medium that you work in. Yeah, well, so it's, it's printmaking. Um, and you know, I would say probably most all of your audience if they aren't familiar with it, they, they are familiar with it just because of the imagery, the, the historical impact that, that printmaking has, uh, especially in like the, just the, the Western, not just Western history, but, you know, Western esotericism. Um, printmaking is, it's just that. It's, it's the art of making prints. Um, the, there's, there's, there's several different types. Um, the one I primarily work in is called relief printmaking, uh, and that's going to be, you know, what you, what you think of as woodcuts. Um, so you're basically taking a slab of wood or a similar type material and carving an image out of it to where it essentially becomes a, a stamp at that point. Um, and you apply a layer of ink and then you run it through a classic printing press and essentially, yeah, you're stamping it onto paper. Um, you know, engravings are a similar manner. Etchings, you know, you'll, you'll see etchings and then, you know, as printmaking evolved, it, it, you know, uh, screen printing and all that kind of fell into it. But primarily what I do is is the, uh, the traditional woodcut style printmaking. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And, and, and how did you, like, how, when, why did you start uh, incorporating uh, the esoterica into your work? Esoteric themes, esoteric symbolism. When, when did that come about? And how did it come about? And why did it come about? <laughs> was, it, was, it, was it visions? <laughs> was it, did an angel give you a mission? Tell us about that. Yeah. Um, well, I guess, so I got into, I got into printmaking probably about, I guess it'd be probably about 15 years ago now. Um, and you know, I've been making art since I was a kid. And especially in my, my early 20s, you know, I, I grew up I grew up in a, in a Christian religious type upbringing. Uh, my early 20s, I really just wanted to research and learn as much about just spirituality uh, in general and started broadening out into different, different forms. And um, so, so those themes did find their way into my artwork even then. Um, as I got older, and it, it did become a little bit more refined. Um, and I'd say really probably around, I guess it'd be, you know, about, about 10 years ago, it really, it really started honing in on it. Um, I think whenever I was in school, you know, I, I was really kind of experimenting with the ideas of, of alchemy in relation to art. Uh, I didn't really fully understand it, but it did help me understand it. Um, and well, I guess, I, who knows if I even understand it now, really. Uh, <laughs> well, you, you're not alone. I think you have as good as understanding as anybody who's living. So you can right. pride yourself on that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, unless you, unless maybe you have the philosopher's stone. I don't know if you've created it yet. So then, <laughs> then perhaps you will. You let us know. Let us know. Okay, sorry. Continue. No, no. Um, so yeah, like it, it really, really like 
I had a, I had a Carl Jung influence in my early twenties. So, you know, that on top of, you know, just the, the introduction to, um, some of the more esoteric schools of thought, uh, it was just kind of one thing after another. Um, and I think a lot of the, the earlier work that I was, I was dealing with when I really started like just focusing in on, on symbolism. Um, I think a lot of it was me just trying to, trying to understand what I was doing really. Uh, it was, you know, like creating, creating these images and then utilizing these symbols and, mostly just trying to like understand what what they what they meant and what their purpose was really um and i think as that progressed it it definitely became more of it, it's still an, an understanding trying to understand but i think it's it's turned more into more what i would consider a conversation really um, where it's, there's more of an actual interaction with these things. It, it's not like approaching them scientifically where I'm trying to like, hmm, I wonder what this means. It's more of like, what is it, what is it telling me? And like, what, what is the, the communication? Like, what is the conversation that we're, that we're having here? Uh, and then it becomes like a, a form of life then at its, at it, instead of rather like a, a message or a transmission or something like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, do you personally find uh, the actual creation, you know, as you're doing it, as you're going through that process you're telling us about at the beginning of, of printmaking, like, do you find that in and, it's, in and of itself to be a meditative or magical or ritualistic working? Or, or is it more about the final product? You know, I'll give it, a, I'll give it an example from from my favorite uh, uh, area that, that I like to talk about, which is myself, right? So I'm a writer, but I really hate writing. You know, I don't I don't enjoy the actual act of it, um, but I really like finishing. I really like editing. Right. So so the actual the, the actual doing it, do you do you find that to be not not just enjoyable? Um, do you find it to be you know, spiritual or transcendent or do you find the finished work only to be spiritual, transcendent or both or neither? Or tell us a bit about that. Yeah. Um, well, I guess kind of on a similar notion, there's there's several steps in the process that I do. And even though I'm a printmaker, my least favorite part of it is the actual like printing part. <laughs> I, I, lo I love the carving part. I'm cool with like the, because after I print them, I go back and I, I hand color them individually. So each one is hand painted. Um, and that's tedious, but I enjoy that part. But the, the printing part, ironically, that's the one that's like the least enjoyable for me. Um, the, the carving is where the magic is for me. And yeah, it, it, it totally is, um, you know, at, at minimum, it's, it's a meditative process. Like you, you go into a state in that, like there is a lot of repetition. Um, there is a lot of like channeled focus. Um, so that definitely assists. But when you're like, really, especially when you're paying attention to like what you're making and you're seeing it like actual, like take life, um, that's that part of creating, you know, that's, that's, that's the spirit. Cause there's a spirit being exposed there or, or it's, it's, it's taking form. It's, it's emanating into this, 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 what once was just a, a blank slate. And now it's like, not only is it visually looking like something, but it's actually like taking on life on its own too. So. Yeah, no, no, very much so. Um, uh, and I think a lot of uh, artists, describe uh, it in, in those terms, right? And I actually find people who have a religious or esoteric and or, you know, both both background actually are, are better at explaining it. You know, I find secular artists sometimes don't quite have the language, right? And uh, again, you know, uh, uh, particularly Gnosticism, you know, I always find like, old school Nag Hammadi, uh, you know, Demiurge Gnosticism is, is also like, it's a story all about creation and both the good things and the difficulties of creating. You know, I really think that it is a narrative about narratives and a narrative that's about uh, creating narratives. Uh, you know, if you're talking about writing, but I think that could be applied to, to any art at all. Um, with a series like Pillars, 
um, and your work in general, but but are there mysteries to you in some of the symbols that you've created or combined or recombined from esoteric works and traditions? Because, you know, I, I know you are taking specific symbols, but you are creating your own symbolic language. You're also recombining the symbols in very interested ways. So it's like everything clearly thought out. Like, is there a one to one like this symbol means this? And, you know, I'm working it into this series. So it relates to it like this. Um, or is there a. Uh, uh, mysteries to yourself? Is this stuff bubbling up from the unconscious or is it a mix of column A, column B? Um, yeah, I would say it's it's more so initially a mystery to myself. Um, by the time I started working on the series Pillars, I think that was around 2016, I think it was. Um, and that's kind of whenever I started recognizing like this was more than me just um creating like puzzles for understanding these were these were images that weren't well thought out um it wasn't like me sitting you know at a, at a blank slate and being like okay i want to put this here i want to put that here and i want to you know and then piecing it together most of these like they came as like full images like already like boom it's like presented to me and it's, it's a lot like a dream where like, I have to sketch it out. Uh, I have to get it down on paper somewhere. Cause otherwise like, you know, in 30 seconds it could be gone. Um, and sometimes these come in like a more like a, like a, a meditative type state, but a lot of times they just come to me and just, and just regular, like everyday activities. And it's just like, boom, you know, it's like there. Um, so yeah, a lot of it is like, okay, like I get it and I can, I sketch it down. Some of them I can be like, okay, I, I can see what's going on here. Uh, and then there's some where it's just like, I don't know, like, I'm not quite sure. And uh, some of them I'll be working on them and I have a pretty good idea. And then I come back to them later and I see something entirely different. Um, or sometimes someone else will see something and it'll just be like, whoa like that went right over my head um so yeah I, I i see these more as being you know like transmissions rather than necessarily like plotted out um you know plotted out uh images or emblems of that, of that nature so. yeah yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I guess uh, going with something that has a, a little bit more of, of a template, you, you did make your own uh, tarot card uh, deck, which, uh, you know, mm -hmm. not all 78, but we're uh, 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 we're letting you off the hook because 22, the, ma the Major Arcana, is, is a huge achievement, Travis. And it's a, it's a beautiful piece of work. Uh, we'll have the link in the um, uh, 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 down below. Everybody, you know, go out and buy your copy. So so I'm wondering there about, you know, uh, the, just the process of making your own tarot and again where, where you have an even stronger template to sort of push and pull between using some of the symbols that are there and of course you know i know there's tons of different tarot decks i'm sure you looked at tons of different tarot decks uh and you know again uh, working in those transmissions you know that sort of dance so if you could tell us a, a bit about that that process yeah that that one was a that one was a little different than say like my personal my personal body of work uh because yeah i'm i'm, I'm working with a, a system that's already it's already there and I, I did want to honor that 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 traditional traditional system. I know there's a lot of a lot of tarot that take it whatever direction you know they, they want to make, and that's kind of the beauty of tarot is you can you can do that. You know, there's there really is no like rules. Um, but for me, it was definitely honoring, um, yeah, just honoring that that traditional traditional tarot, and it is visually based off of the uh, the Marseille deck. Um, so it, it is gonna reflect that one a little bit more, but it's 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 kind of a, a homage to it while also um, you know me incorporating my my interpretation and my approach to it. Um, so that one I would say was would be less of a transmission except maybe the 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 first one, um, the magician card. And that was the one where I decided to do this like I'd, I'd been throwing it around for a while after you know about a decade of people telling me i should make a tarot and me just saying like no no like, no i'm not gonna do it um and i had a i had a dream and um in that dream it was me like designing the magician card um 
And so it was me like, okay, I'm going to put, you know, he's going to have, you know, these are the many eyes and, you know, he's going to have four arms. And uh, I woke up and like, I did the same thing. Like I wrote it down in my little notebook and I was like, okay, I guess, I guess that's step one. I've already designed the first one. So let's keep rolling. Um, but yeah, it, it was uh, several months of just, you know, just, you know, I was, I was familiar with, with the tarot, um, but I wanted to do it properly. So it was like several months of um, diligent research, um, taking notes, doing some sketches uh, before I actually even like drew on any blocks. So, wow. Uh, so do you think you're going to do the other uh, 56 cards? It's yeah, yeah. Eventually, um, yeah. it took me it took me about a year to do the the twenty two. Yeah. Um, granted, the you know the the major arcana, you know those are, you know that's the heavy hitters. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the the plan is to to finish it. Um, yeah. When, just, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, no no rush. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, and, and you know, to be honest, uh, the, the, uh, uh, I'm a great lover of tarot, but I, I basically use, and I can only read the uh, the, the 22 cards, right? So if, if I, the rare times I do do a reading for another person, uh, that you know, I, I separate out the major arcana. So um, so there's there's my dirty tarot confession. But yeah. that said, <laughs> uh, lot, lots of value in the minor arcana, and uh, don't worry, uh, th I, I think people can understand that uh, that 56 cards is a that, that's a bit of an undertaking. But, yeah. um, you know, it's great that you brought up the Marseille and its influence on you that, you know, something that uh, kind of similar to the question I just asked, but a little bit different, um, which is so uh, I'm assuming you do want people like, and of course, it's a beautiful work of art, right? People can just appreciate it as art. I shouldn't say just, but you know what I mean, you know, appreciating art is transcendent. But uh, I, I think it's a it's a great practical tarot deck, especially, again, for somebody who uh, uh, generally uses the, uh, the major arcana. So. Is it challenging, like, to work the, the symbols and the common interpretations into the card? Well, into the cards, while leaving some room for personal interpretation. You know, it's um, like like Jodorowsky, He really likes the Marseille Tarot because it has less esoteric symbolism, right? So it, mm -hmm. it leaves more up to the person reading the cards. So again, right. do you, did, were you thinking about that? Were you having that that dance of thoughts when you were when you were putting together your your symbolism, creating uh, your deck? Yeah, yeah. It that is one nice thing about the, the Marseille deck is that, you know, it, it, it leaves that open for you. Um, you know, whereas if you're going to do like the writer Wade Smith deck, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's done, you know, like it's, it's there. Um, or it's you just making your own, which is, you know, obviously a, a legitimate route too. Um, but no, I think I think yeah, I think using using the Marseille deck was kind of you know that was my first deck I got, um, and it was just kind of the it's it's really it's the only one that I really like enjoy same thing like the only one I really enjoy like using, um, so I think it was just just a mix of that really. Um, I did whenever one of my early reasons of getting into that deck the first one i bought was because of uh yodorowsky uh i read his book and you know say say what you want about him you know that that definitely like i, I related to it because like if you read it it's just like everything he's every like tiny little bit of that card there there is a symbolism to it and it's it's subtle and it's hidden um so yeah it is um you know it is at first glance, kind of just a, a, a basic form of, of tarot, especially compared to like so many of the new contemporary ones that are just like loaded with um, just esoteric symbolism and everything. Um, but yet it still has that. And it was also kind of the, the backbone, which everything was built off of as well. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's interesting, and um, and I hope my questions aren't getting repetitive, because it, it kind of does seem like a lot of your work is sort of in the middle, And but I'm really happy there's a lot coming as transmissions from the unconscious, from the pleroma, from that other reality, whatever, it's all the same thing, if you ask me, because I, I find that there's two extremes, Um in, in quote-unquote esoteric art, right, which is everything is, is sort of anally down to the... Um, 
exact symbol to the exact tilt of the head to the exact uh, uh, dot to the, the to the exact point of the pointillism of the of the paintbrush uh, has has a, a specific meaning right that's been encoded in sort of the the Da Vinci Code style uh, uh, every single thing right and you know that's actually sort of the uh, Rider Wake deck which I love right it was my first tarot deck so it's it'll it'll always be the tarot to me right but everything in there down to the smallest detail has a an esoteric interpretation right and then you have the other extreme, which is, you know, things are more channeled, they're coming through dreams, they're coming through visions, they are coming uh, in either of those, people don't know where they're coming from, you know, uh, strange men are appearing in the middle of the night and giving you these symbols, um, so, so stuff like that. Um, and, I, you know, I say these are extremes, but, uh, you know, I think the best artists like yourself sort of combine those two, right? Like you are drawing from thousands of years of esoteric symbolism, but at the same time, you're not being hedged in by it. It's not... Um, you know, I, 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 I don't mean to be facetious, but it, it does get a little anal, right? Where, where every, you know, the tilt of their head represents the following seven things and only the following right. seven things. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I remember, um, you know, I, my, my esoteric, and this is not a slam, it's something I enjoyed quite a bit, right? But um, uh, the, my introduction to, to esoterica was, uh, was Martinism. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I went to a... Uh, a Martinist meeting, a Martinist lecture. Then the whole the whole hour was just the uh, the the Martinist uh, um, uh, heptagram, which is the uh, the seal of Solomon, the uh, the, the star of David. Um, uh, it's also surrounded by a circle. There's a few other details. There's a cross in the middle, but it's still a pretty s simple um, symbol, right? So I'm like, well, this is going to be a short meeting, but it was you know it was just it was an hour just on that, right? And every and you know there's there's as I said, it's still you know your basic uh, star of David, the, a symbol that everybody is 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 familiar with. But, uh, you know, there's a few a few small additions. But let me tell you, brother, those additions were very important. <laughs> um, so, um, uh, yeah. So uh, the, uh, moving on, I, I understand that you're working on a, a card deck now. Can you can you tell us about that? Yeah. Um, so this is you mentioned earlier uh, pillars. Yeah. And um, basically what pillars is was a body of work that I started. Like I said, I think it was 2016 when I initially did like the first couple ones um and uh it's 36 there's 36 in this edition uh they were initially called pillars just because of the shape they were just a really tall thin um form so it's like really like i was really restricted and um which was like a fun challenge because like before that i think the ones i was doing they were i did like a series where they're just square which was kind of fun it was boxy but you know this was just like you know, is there the the original prints are I think they're 19 tall, and I think they're only were about like four and a half inches wide. So they're like, you know, um, and and yeah, so they're, they're shaped like pillars. And uh, if you're familiar with Western esotericism, you know, you you surely are have come across the the tales of the uh, you know the the ancient pillars that that contained. Um, you know, ancient, ancient wisdom, you know, whether that was, you know, buried by Enoch, um, there's a lot of, lot of origin tales to them, but essentially what they were, were yeah, there, there's these pillars that were buried with a divine, divinely inspired, um, hidden message of knowledge and wisdom inside of them, which can easily be played as like, that's what these are, these pieces of art, because, um, inside them there's 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 a narrative there's there's these 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 symbols there's something that has to be uh decoded that isn't just like blatantly just told to you you know so it does take contemplation it does take um you know just like just 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 thinking about it really and that opens you up to you know whatever you want to call it um just whatever is greater than you in that sense so um yeah i did that from 2016 till 2020 was whenever I, I finished, I finished those. And, um, I did do a, a, a small run of like a, of like a little book of them, but you know, over, you know, just everybody's seen them like, well, one, they'd see them and they'd think they were tarot cards. And it was just like, no, they're not tarot cards. Um, and then I eventually did my tarot deck after that the following year. But, um, it was just like these these need to be these need to be in a deck fashion they need to be in a deck fashion and they they work the same way as what like a tarot would because a tarot is you know you pull the card 
you have an image and in, in that image there's different symbols just like what we were saying and by reading that card you know you you you're essentially like you're opened up to either um some sort of insight or just some sort of revelation um you know, they're, they're tools is what they are. And that's essentially what, you know, art is too. And especially my focus in the, in the stuff that I do. So like presenting these to where like, you know, people that can't just like buy, you know, original art, uh, especially like a, a series of them, um, totally under, understandable there. But for something like this, you know, it you, you will be able to get them in like a deck type format and you can pull them randomly. You can work with them however you want there's no there's no rules it's not like a a tarot deck it's not even really like a like an like an oracle deck um though it could be used like that in a sense um it's not a book because, included that's going to give you readings if you pull them right 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 and but at the same time like who's to say that it, they, they can't either you yeah. know like that, that's, that's kind right. of the, the the beauty of of um of artwork especially artwork that has a like a, a symbolic message to it is you know like the same as like whenever I'm making it, you know, you communicate with it, you connect with it. And you're like, what does this mean? And then you sit with it. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, do you think that there's anything to you? So I'd say for, for about a, a decade now, you know, we've been going through a, a bit of an esoteric revival, which is already within the last couple of years and in some ways died down. Right. I don't know when the peak was. Uh, I, I, I don't know when it was at its height of being cool in Brooklyn. Uh, but um, at the same time, it, it still is, you know, I, I think um, the, the fad continues. Do you, do you think that this, this present occult revival, that it is just a fad, that it'll just be the, the real heads like you and, and myself who, who will be keeping uh, working on these mediums? Or, or do you think that there's that there's some kind of shift that, because, uh, you know, I have noticed more visual artists, you know, working with mm -hmm. these symbols, uh, drawing on this knowledge, looking at the Western esoteric tradition. Um, so, you know, will it grow? Will it make any changes? Will it die down? Do you have any predictions, feelings, intuitions? Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I necessarily want to predict anything or not. Um, it was pretty obvious that it was getting like super trendy. Yeah. Um, which, yeah, like just the, you know, social media probably helped help do this, but just, yeah, like the, the tarot, you know, astrology, astrology is like still pretty huge. Um, and even if it is just kind of like, you know, like, the introduction to astrology level of like sun signs and such um, still just the, the interest in it is there. Um, it may be a lot of just our, our culture and, you know, we're so technology just focused and controlled, which is, there's a magical aspect to it, but it's still like, it's so materialistically based. So something that does speak to the individual, especially knowing that just, you know, like religion isn't as prevalent in culture as much as now, obviously. Um, so a lot of people are scared of that of approaching things in like a religious type manner. So replacing it with something like tarot or astrology, um, crystals, or even just a lot of just kind of like, you know, just the, the new agey kind of lingo. Um, it's still there. It's just, it's just taken it like a different, a different form. So I don't know if, if it's so much, I don't know if it's going to wane or not. Uh, it might just continue to just take different different shapes. Um, we'll see. I don't. Yeah, I'm not sure as for as for what to expect. I, 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 but I do at the same time. I see there is a, a heavy interest in um, more of like a traditionalist approach too. Um, you know, like something with a little bit more structure um, and, and discipline. You know, like it's it's definitely this like new age occulty movement is definitely very, very free. Um, and that's probably real fun and appealing to a lot of people. But I think there's a point where 
because it lacks the discipline, because it lacks um, some sort of structure that they, they don't necessarily get anything out of it except, except the, the fashion of it, really. Um, but yeah, so I, I do see there's kind of like this, this pull and in, in, in more of like the traditional thoughts. Um, you know, it, it seems like um, things like uh, the Neoplatonist are getting a lot of, a lot of buzz right now. Um, in, um, let's say in, in Christianity, I think like orthodoxy is getting, is getting a lot of buzz. Um, so, which is, which is very neoplatonic. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, so, totally, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's right there. Yeah. Um, so I think there's something to that yeah. that's happening. And I don't know if that's a, a, a counterbalance to, um, you know, the last 10 years of like super, super trendy, um, occulty kind of stuff. And then, you know, a lot of people getting into it and either not into it, um, or just not getting it, not utilizing it properly. Maybe, um, I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah. I, I also, the, the open-ended question, right? So I, I, I too have, have no predictions and, uh, I've seen both interesting things and distressing things. You know, it, it does seem, the more so within the last couple of years, you know, alchemy is is another thing that 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 more people seem to be interested in, and you know that that really kind of uh, warms my soul, right? Because I mean, you can dip your toe in, but it's very hard just to dip your toe in, right? And it, I find if you do tip your uh, dip your toe in, particularly with the symbolism, you know, once you start looking through those manuscripts, once you start engaging with that symbolism, once you uh, start looking at, at some of those alchemical emblems and figures, right, it's got you. So, mm -hmm. um, so I, I find that to be uh, uh, really awesome. I hope I hope that that is uh, that that is more than a trend. So, yeah, yeah, and that's that's kind of the you know like the the purpose of it too. You know, like it yeah. it is a, it is a mystery, yeah. um, and I think yeah that that adds a level of intrigue which is going to hold your interest more. And as you start to decipher, it's just you're just like peeling, just peeling the onion. Just like there's more layers, there's more layers, there's more layers. Um, which in a sense is even if you're not necessarily doing, you know, like the, the traditional process, the lab process of it, you still are engaging in the alchemical process in that sense, um, which is essentially the, 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 the true form of alchemy. Um, the, the hands-on aspect of it was, was the discipline, um, and it was the actual work that was coming from the discipline. Um, yeah, precisely, precisely. Well, it's it's been really uh, amazing, awesome, all sorts of other great words to start with. Hey, talking to you, um, but I should start to wrap it up. So it's sort of a final question, you know, more more on the the art side. Even though, as I as I've said many times uh, already in this conversation in general, you know, I think art and religion and esotericism, magic, mysticism are, are actually, you know, come from the same place. But what, what do you think, like, the esoteric myth, Jung, Gnosticism, all this stuff, you know, has to offer a curious artist who knows nothing about it, right? Who maybe was, had a bad experience of religion, is uh, an atheist, an agnostic, uh, thinks mm -hmm. that the, this stuff is flim-flam. You know, do, do you think that uh, that you'd have anything to say to someone about, the, you know, what Jung might have might have to offer them as, as an artist or, you know, uh, alchemical uh, manuscripts or any other example that, that you may want to go with? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess it depends on what kind of artist you want to be, really. You know, like if, if you're if you're an artist that if you're trying to just strictly get a monetary gain out of it, like, you know, you're, you're a designer, really, at that point, you're making you're making stuff that other people want. Um, now, if you're really in it for the creative process, the the actual like what we're talking about the you know the, the creative act, um, that's a I mean, and this is this might just be my 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 personal bias, but I mean that's that's like one of the like the the one of the holiest things that you can do as a as an incarnate human, really, like if if you are creating, you're essentially mimicking the, 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 the one thing that the universe 
does. And that's just a, a constant act of creation. So if you on a microcosm scale are, are imitating the art of creation, that's, that's about as much of a devotional prayer that you can do. Um, and if you're not, if you're not doing it for making money, if you're not doing it for, you know, Instagram likes, you know, you're just doing it because of that feeling you get when doing it. Um, you know, that's, in my opinion, that's, that's about as equal as a, you know, as a, as a communion with, with God as you can, as you can do. Yeah, obviously, I agree, and that that's a great place to, to wrap it up. So, for those who are watching at home, uh, you've seen that we, we have thrown up uh, some some plugs for uh, Travis, but it's infinity-prints.com. Uh, that'll be linked in the show notes uh, and uh, uh, link dot re uh, link tree uh, <laughs> dot com slash Travis Lawrence. Uh, so go check out his stuff. Do more than check out his stuff. Buy his stuff. Uh, Patreon.com slash Gnostic to help us out for as little as a dollar per piece of media per month you can do one-time donations at paypal.me slash gnostic travis it's been great uh thanks so much and uh good night goodbye uh good morning good afternoon whenever you're listening to the show god bless <laughs> thank you goodbye